good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television and radio broadcast where Jesus is Lord. He is King. And yes, he is our healer. I didn't say he was. I didn't say he was going to be. He is right now. Present tense, our healer. Can you say amen to that? Well, glory to God. I have a message for you today. I have been by the grace of God, of course, spending time in the presence of the Lord uh, for several hours this morning, preparing myself, consecrating myself for this moment. <laughs> I just get a joy out of this, y'all. I mean, I do this like a bird flies through the air. I do this like a bird. Uh, the eagle just comes off his cliff and just flaps his wings and just graciously flows through the air like a fish that just graciously swims through the seas, through the water, through the lakes, through the ponds. The anointing of God that's upon my life makes things so, so easy. And I'm going to allow that anointing to flow today because God wants you well. I'm going to say that again. God wants you well. Healing, listen to me carefully, is like a walk through the park with God. Would you like me to say that again? I'm trying to give you a visual. Can you see yourself walking through the park? There's no struggle. You're following the path. You're enjoying the scenery. You're watching people walk their dogs. You're watching the children play. You're watching the birds fly through the air. You're just so calm and relaxed, enjoying the sunshine. Walk in the park. Healing to God is like a walk through the park. You may want to write that down. I want you to see God easily healing you today. Not a problem. Easy for him. Now, let me give you a scripture for that. Then we'll go ahead and pray and get into the word for the day. There was a man in the gospel of Luke chapter five. By the way, grab a Bible, please, fast as you can. The Bible says that four men bore him, came to the door, found the place packed out. How many people know that Jesus will pack the house out? Pack it out. <laughs> Glory to God. So there's no place to get him in. So they had to climb up on the roof, break the roof off and let him down. Jesus, get ready, he saw their faith. See, he saw their faith. He said, son, your sins be forgiven you. Now, the religious folk caught an attitude. Now, listen to what Jesus said when he knew their thoughts. He said, why are you reasoning? Which is, wait for it, easier for me to say. Your sins be forgiven or rise up and walk. Jesus, listen, y'all, this is powerful. He said, there's no difference to him whether he's going to heal the man or forgive him. He said it was easy. He said that. Luke chapter 5, I didn't say it. I'm just repeating Jesus. He said, it's easy. Now, this man can't walk. And you're talking about that's easy for you? <laughs> to make him walk. <laughs> Listen to me. Just by talking, he didn't touch the man. He just said, man, arise, take up your bed and walk, go home, go to your house. That easy. Listen to me carefully. It's that easy for Jesus to heal you today. Get a revelation. You're no different than that man. In fact, the fact that Jesus had to first say, man, your sins be forgiven. Obviously, there was something wrong in that man's life. Otherwise, he would have never brought it up. Right. So so don't think, man, I feel like preaching that your sin or your hang up or your fault or your shortcoming is going to stop the power of God from operating in your life today. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say sin was cool. I said, don't think that your hang up. Your, your sin, your fault, your shortcoming. Can let me share something with you. Revelation from heaven. All of us have them. See, if it were my works that were going to get me healed today or my, my goody two shoeness or my self piety or so, nobody can get anything from God that way. We are saved by grace through faith. That's it, y'all. See, it's the goodness of God. We work because we love him. That's why I live, right? Because I'm so holy and trying to get nothing. 
I just love the Lord. That's why I love people. That's why I tithe. That's why I give offerings. That's why I help people. That's why I, you know, I forgive. That's because I love God. Okay, but that's not how I receive from him. I receive by grace through faith, and so do you. So get a revelation. You're going to receive today from God. So I want everybody to relax. Make sure you have a Bible. You're going to need one. Y'all know I'm a teacher. I love to teach a pure and unadulterated word. Make sure you have a pen and a highlighter because I would like you to take some notes and make sure you have a writing pad. I keep writing pads everywhere, y'all. It's important to take notes. God is always speaking to you and you want to be ready when he says something so you can take a note. We call this healing school and we teach and preach. Y'all know that faith, divine healing and health. Jesus is the healer. We preach a full gospel that Jesus bore your sin at the cross. He bore my sin. He bore your sickness. He bore my sickness. He bore your disease. He bore my disease. He bore your poverty. He bore my poverty. He bore According to Galatians 3.13, the curse of the law, everything that was damnable to man, Jesus bore at the cross. Close your eyes as we begin to pray. It was on that cross that Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sakbaktani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned from him because Jesus' visage was so marred. He didn't even look like a man, according to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52. He bore sin and sin had made his face though decrepit. He was deformed. He was bleeding. You can see his bones, the psalmist said in the book of Psalm. He was suffering at that cross for you and me. He went to hell in our place and God raised him from the dead. And Father, we come to you in the name of that same Savior whom you sent, the Messiah, the Anointed One, Jesus Christ, the Lord. And we use his name to get all of heaven's attention. Glory to God. We use the name above all names as we approach the holy throne of grace today. We come to receive a pure and unadulterated word. Oh, God, give the man of God utterance to speak your word boldly today. Help him to make it plain, Jesus. And we'll feed upon this word. We receive your word as it is indeed the word of God in truth. We allow this word, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, to pierce through the dividing asunder of our soul and spirit. We allow your word to get down into our joints and marrow to remove sickness, to remove disease, to remove cancer, tumors, viruses. In Jesus' name, we expect the fire of God to fall afresh today. Burn up everything that's not like you, God. Arise, O oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Let demons flee. Let the enemy tremble at the presence of the Lord. And let sickness run. Run from the presence of the Lord as we receive the word of the living God. And Father, we'll make sure we give you all the praise for it, all the glory, all the honor. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and we praise you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. I'm excited, y'all. This is the way I live. Glory to God. All right. Get your Bibles, please. We've been talking about Bible ways to receive your healing, Bible ways to receive your healing. This is lesson number 15. Turn with me, please, to the book of third John. We're going to start there. Third John. That's in the back of the Bible by revelation, the epistle of John. And you may also, while you're at it, go ahead and find Matthew chapter eight. I'm going to quickly review some things and then I want to talk about some powerful things concerning the blood of Jesus and your healing in mind. Powerful things. Powerful, powerful. But let's begin in 3 John. And before I read this text, I want to make a statement that I made uh, last week that is phenomenal. All right. Now get ready. You ready? Get ready. <laughs> By doing what's right. R-I-G-H-T. In the natural and the spiritual, y'all. This is key. That's how you walk in divine health. 
I'm going to say it again. It's revelation from heaven. You should meditate on that thought. By doing what's right, if I, Garen Gatling, put your name in there, if I'll just do what's right in the natural and the spiritual, that's how I walk in divine health. Divine meaning God health. That'll preach right there. God health. What is God health? The health that God intended from the beginning of time for you and me. The kind of health that Adam walked in before he sinned. See, the kind of health that the Bible says God saw everything that he had made and it was very good. And I want you to notice that was verse 31, verse 26. He made man. So if God saw everything he made and it was very good, Adam's health had to be very good. I feel like preaching. It was divine. It came from God. God formed his body from the earth, you Lord, from, from, from the ground. He formed and fashioned man, breathed into him the breath of life. Man became a living soul. The life of God was in him. The life of God was all over him. Even Adam walked around naked. It made no difference to them. They were so caught up in the glory. Didn't even notice their bodies. So, you know, sickness and disease had no dominion over them. That's God's divine health. The power of God flowing through their bodies. Now, by doing the right thing in the natural, listen to me carefully. What do I mean by that? Taking care of my body for one, you know, rest my body. A rested body is a healthy body. Please rest your body. See, I can do all the spiritual stuff, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I can do all that and be sick as a dog. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm telling you, you can. See, you have to do both of them, the natural and the spiritual. Please get a revelation of this. Rest your body. A rested body is a healthy body. The body was designed by God to rest. OK, it needs a period of time to revive, renew, regenerate new cells and everything. Your body needs that time. Number two, a hydrated body is a healthy body. Good tea, water, keep your body nice and fluid. So your body needs that to flush toxins out, to move uh, oxygen and, and uh, the, uh, the nutrients that you ate. It has to move that throughout the body. Water does that through the bloodstream. So it has to have hydration, a rested body, a hydrated body. The body needs good, healthy food. OK, things that have nutrients and vitamins. God designed it that way. That's why he put it in the food. Right. Your fruits, your vegetables. If you eat meat, he put it in there. Creatine and all the things you need. Protein. God put it in the food. OK. Now, let me add this on there, if you don't mind. Because uh, the earth has been depleted, mankind has kind of abused it. So a lot of the minerals and vitamins have been taken out of it. So that's why uh, good supplementation is necessary. I really believe that any doctor can tell you this. OK, good supplementation, uh, good multivitamin, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D3, especially vitamin D3, zinc, fish oil uh, and a good probiotic. Those are just your foundation. That's good stuff just to keep the body fluid and plenty of fiber, that kind of thing. Very, very important to stay healthy. Rest, fluids, good, healthy food and exercise. Those are necessary for the human body. This thing that we live in, this house. It needs that to function at optimum results. Now, that's doing stuff right in the natural. What about the spiritual? Very simple. Number one, the word of God. Jesus said in the gospel of Matthew chapter four, man shall not live by natural food alone. You know, that's in the Bible. Matthew four, four and Deuteronomy eight and three. So mankind was not just designed to have natural food, God said, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, why is that? We know it's true because Jesus said it. Now, why is it true? Because man is a spirit being. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to let that hang for a moment. You and I are spirit 
beings created in the image and likeness of God. We are more than just flesh and bone and blood. More. Okay. The real you is on the inside. That's the person that must be born again. See? Must be. Once he or she is born again, he becomes a new creature or a new creation or as the Amplified Bible says, a new species of being that never existed before in the likeness of Jesus himself, the image and glory of God on the inside, a new man, glory to God. And, and it's a hidden man, the Bible calls him. He's hidden behind his flesh. But he needs a word. <laughs> he feeds on the word of God. Your body doesn't want chicken. He doesn't want celery and apples. He, the body wants that. The spirit man, he wants the word of God. That's what he feeds on. Jesus said man lives by natural food and spiritual food. So it's right to eat healthy food, rest the body, hydrate it, exercise and so forth. But it's also right to make sure my body, my spirit man, has the word of God, has prayer and communion with God. He needs that. He needs the life of God flowing through him. Are you listening to me? Very, very important. Be connected to a church, tithing, being a part, an active member. All these things breed life, y'all. Very, very important. And most of all, walk in love and forgiveness. You have to do that if you and I are going to walk in divine health. So, so, so important. Did you get that? All right, let's move on. Third John 2. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may A, prosper. Say it. God wants me to prosper. And by the way, the actual Greek text says, it's my earnest desire that you prosper. In other words, this is what God wants for you and me more than anything, y'all. This is at the top of his list. After we receive the life of God, you get born again. Jesus talked about abundant life, a life that is overflowing, a life that is full of joy and power. See, abundant, glory to God, victorious. So he went beyond just getting born again. He said, I came that you might have life and have it that more abundantly. An abundant life, a victorious life, where we're more than conquerors, where we win. When we face the storms of life, we win. When we face the mountains of life, we win. When we face the Goliath that wants to tell us, you're going to die. You ain't going to make it. I'm going to take your child. I'm going to take you home. I'm going to take you. See, we can win. Glory to God. Jesus talked about an abundant life. Can you say amen? And God desires that more than anything. Look at it again. He called you his beloved. So that's an endearment term. This is you talking to your child, baby, I love you. Well, mama wants you for you. Mama already put away some money because mama makes sure you go to school, get a good education. I want you to have a future. So mama planned all this. Can you see that? That's what God's telling us. My beloved, I want you to prosper. I want you, look at it, in health. And I want that to be just like your soul prospers. So God's concern about our total prosperity. Write that down, please. Or say it with your mouth. God is concerned about my total prosperity. Yes, Lord, I'll share that. I'm going to write that down because the Lord just gave me something. I'm going to share that. Glory to God. God is concerned about my total prosperity. Your total prosperity. Spirit and soul and body. And notice the text says he wants this above everything. So close your eyes and say this with me, please. It is God's will for me to be healed. It is God's will for me to prosper. God wants my soul to prosper. See, and, and, and tell the God you can open your eyes. Take time to think about stuff like that what God intends for you, okay? See yourself Garden of Eden time, see? You wanna see all needs met, no worries, you're walking in the glory, where natural things don't phase you no more. You know they're there, but they don't dominate you no more. See, that's the place to be. 
divine health. Now, go with me, please, to Matthew chapter 8. I told you to hold your place there. We'll just read one scripture, then we're going to run. Verses 1 and 2. When Jesus was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And what did Jesus say? I will. He put forth his hand. He touched him and said, I will. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 13. I'll slow it down just a little bit. I want you to write all these verses down. Think about these things. This is healing school. Okay, we're here to learn something. Glory to God. Now, as you're learning, you're receiving your healing. As you say amen, as you're taking notes, as you're getting excited about this thing like I am, <laughs> healing flows. See, he healing, healing has to have a certain atmosphere, y'all. There's an atmosphere of faith and expectancy that's like a breeding ground for miracles. Miracles happen where faith is alive. Miracles happen where expectation is alive, where hope is alive, where people just desire something from God. Jesus said those that hunger and thirst, those are the ones that get filled. So you got to be hungry. <laughs> Let God know, feed me. Hallelujah. Give me a word. Touch me, Jesus. I don't mind. Glory to God. Just give me a word. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13. Look at verse 8. Jesus Christ. Somebody say Christ. Now, the word Christ, if you didn't know, is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> Matter of fact, I don't even know his last Nobody knows his last name except his parents, probably. Yeah, we don't know because they didn't talk like that. Jesus Christ. The word Christ means Messiah. It means anointed one. See, it also refers to his anointing. That's why he's called the anointed one. When you call somebody uh, Jake the plumber, you know, that well, Jake must be a plumber. He's got tools to plumber. Or John, the electrician, you know, well, that's what he works on. And he has to have the tools to get the job done. Jesus, the anointed one. See, he must have the power to get the job done. I feel like preaching. He got to have it. See, that's why he's called the anointed one. He's got burden removing, yoke destroying power. Can you say amen? Scripture, Jesus said in Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Question. Why is the spirit of the Lord upon you, Jesus? He said, wait for it. Because he has anointed me. Question, Jesus. What did he anoint you for? Wait for it. He sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. Wait for it. He sent me to heal. See, 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 the anointing on Jesus is to get some work done. <laughs> oh, God. He said, I'm here to preach and I'm sent to heal. I'm here to preach deliverance to those that are captive. I'm here to recover sight of the blind. And he said, that's because of the anointing. So look at 13 again, verse 8. Jesus, the anointed one, the one with burden removing, yoke destroying power, the one that walks on water, the one that raises the dead, the one that opens the eyes of the blind, the one that opens the ears of those that can't hear him. The Bible says he's the same, the same Jesus that looked at that leper we just read about and said, I will. Yeah, I want you well. He's the same yesterday. That's his history. So when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's the history of the Son of God as he walked the earth. That's him, the anointed one. And the Bible says he's the same. And look at it today. That means right now, as I speak, right now, as I teach, right now, as I preach, he's the same. 
as he sits at the right hand of the father. He's the same. He ain't changed. I don't know how people can talk about, well, he don't heal no more. And, you know, that passed away. I don't know where they get that from. Who, who told you that? Where'd you get that? What seminary you went to? What's the name of that church you go to so I can stay away from it? Talking about Jesus don't heal no more. The Bible says he's the same. Yesterday and today, wait for it, and forever. So he'll always be a healer. Always. Glory to God. Somebody say always. Can you say amen? Now go to the book of 2 Peter. This is the text God gave me a, minute, a moment ago for you. Get our healing today, y'all. We ain't got to wait. Jesus is the same. That leper came to him. We're going to 2 Peter chapter 1. The leper came to him. Now, that was Mark's, uh, Matthew's account. Dr. Luke said he was full of leprosy. So Dr. Luke gave us the proper diagnosis. Luke is a doctor. He's a physician. He said that man ready to die. He's in the last stage, full of it. See, that's it. Ain't no hope for you. See, but he came to Jesus and he said, I know you can. I know you got the power. I heard about you. I know what you can do. What I don't know is will you do it for me? And Jesus in compassion touched him and said, yeah, I'll do it. Glory to God. One translation says, of course I will. In other words, if Jesus were from the hood, he would have said, what kind of question is that? Yeah, I'll do it. That's why I came. That's why the anointing's on me. I'm here to seek and save that which is law. Yes, sir. I came to destroy the works of the devil. Remove burdens. Destroy yokes. I came to preach. Glory to God. That's why he came. Yes, sir. That Jesus. And he's the same. He ain't changed at all. Hallelujah. Now look at 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Actually, let me read 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just read the whole context of it. God gave me that when I was talking to you about the natural man and the spirit man. See, because we're spirit beings. We have a soul and we live in a body. I'll show you that text in a moment. See, that total man is what Jesus came to redeem. See, not just go to heaven. If all Jesus wanted was for you and me to go to heaven, we'd be there now. What's, what are we waiting on? Let's, let's go. We say we're born again. So that's obvious. Not all he wanted. The apostle Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Transform. Glory to God. God, God wants translated spirits transform minds and transform bodies. God wants the total man to get himself together. Glory to God. Every part. Look at verse 1. Second Peter. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus, the anointed one. There goes that word Christ again. He's not just talking about that Jesus' last name. He's talking about the one with that burden removing, yoke destroying power. Uh, hold your place just one minute. <laughs> Go to the book of Acts, chapter 10. We will make this thing so plain. A little baby can understand this. I bet you your baby probably dancing around like, yeah, preach, preach. That's real. Glory to God. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Now, if you look at thir verse 34, Peter's talking. He said, Peter opened his mouth. So Peter talking. Listen to what he said in verse 38. How God anointed. There go that word again. Anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth. The man. God took the man and anointed him. The word anoint means to pour on. It means to rub into or to smear. <laughs> Peter said, God poured on Jesus, rubbed all into him, smeared him with what? The, look at it. The Holy Ghost and power. Now, when did that happen? Well, Luke chapter three. 
John the Baptist baptized him. He came out of the water. The spirit of God descended like a dove upon him. And God said, this is my beloved son. That's him. That's the anointed one. I gave him my spirit without measure, unlimited power and anointing. <laughs> and Peter said, look at it. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. Now, what did he do with that power? Look at it. He went about doing good with the anointing and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. <laughs> now go back to second Peter. And now you'll know what Peter's talking about in verse one. He said, Simon, Peter, I'm a servant and an apostle of Jesus. The one with the burden removing yoke, destroying power. The one that the spirit of God came down on him. He goes about doing good and healing him. Not just Jesus Christ, that's his last name. No, Je Peter's talking about power and he starts the letter out like that. I'm Simon Peter. I'm an apostle, but I'm an apostle of the boss. The one with burden removing yoke destroying power. So that ought to make me listen. What in the world does Jesus want to say to me through this apostle? He says to them that have obtained like Precious faith. Say it. I have like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's where we got it. So this precious faith that we have, we got it from the anointed one. Verse two, grace and peace. Circle both of those words, grace and peace. Notice what he says, be multiplied. Now that means, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. Multiply. Like two times two equals four. Is that what you mean by multiply, Peter? Like four times four, 16, give me more. Yeah. Grace and peace. God wants it. Wait for it. I'm going somewhere. He wants it multiplied. So wait a minute. So that must mean I already have something. He just wants to increase it. I feel like preaching. He said multiply it. So God wants me to have four times four. God wants me to have five times five, 25. He wants me to have more. Jesus called it abundant. Not just life, abundant. Multiply it. Oh, glory to God. Grace. The initial grace that you and I received is found in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, for by grace are you saved. That's the original grace that I received from God. But notice he wants it multiplied. He wants grace times peace multiplied. <laughs> now to get a good revelation of that, two things you need to know. Number one, Peter is a Jew. OK, <laughs> he's a Jew. You know, he's a Jew. When a Jew says peace, P-E-A-C, he's not he's not in my part of the town putting up two fingers. Talking about peace. Hello. How you doing? No, no, no. no. The word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. Get ready. Get ready. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. It means perfect. Wait for it. Perfect well-being. In other words, God wants everything to be all right. Your welfare, your health, your family, your ministry, everything. He, and he wants it multiplied. Why? Write this down. Write it down quickly. Overflow is for ministry. I said overflows for ministry. The initial grace that I received got me saved. But I need more grace so I can go to somebody else saved. The peace that Jesus gave to me so that I don't have to be troubled when I'm in the world. He wants that multiply. Why? So I can go help somebody else. The peace he gave me, that's for me. The grace he gave to me, that's for me. But what about the people around me? What about my family? What about the souls that I drive past every day? They need the grace of God. They need the peace of God. So I need it multiplied. Glory to God. The shalom of God, nothing missing, nothing broken. It actually, one of the best words is welfare. 
in the Hebrew it means welfare. Everything that has to do with making everything peaceful around me. See, God wants me to have it and he wants it multiplied. Yes. <laughs> Watch this. Through the knowledge. So the more information I get, the more grace that comes. The more information I get, the more peace or shalom I get. And the opposite is true. If I'm not getting any information, I'm talking about Bible, scriptural information and revelation. If there is no grace multiply. There is no peace multiplication without it. The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, verse 3, according as his divine power. Somebody say anointing. Yeah. <laughs> the same one that was on Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. That divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So if it has anything to do with my life, that's my health, my wealth, my money, my job, my family. The Bible said he gave it to me. But notice how I activated. Look at the rest of that verse. Through the knowledge of him. So if I'm not getting information, if I'm not getting revelation, this doesn't happen for me. Can you see that? He gave it. Now, the Apostle Peter started out by talking about precious faith. Faith activates that anointing. Faith activates that power. Faith gets the grace and the peace to be multiplied to me. So I have to increase my faith. I got to use my faith. I got to get some information. I need a word. Jesus said, you don't live by natural food alone, son. You need a word from God. Why, Jesus? So your faith can increase. So information can come. Revelation can come. So I can multiply your grace and multiply the peace. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Through the knowledge of him that has called us, wait for it, to glory and virtue. We're called to it. What glory? The same one that was on Adam before he sinned. The glory. <laughs> yeah. Look at verse four. Whereby, in other words, God is saying, this is why I'm giving you exceeding great and precious promises. See, so God said, this is what I want for you. Grace multiplied. Peace multiplied. I want, you, I want your welfare good. Your health, your wealth, shalom, all of it. So I'm going to give you these promises called the Holy Bible so that by these, look at it, the Bible's talking. You might partake, there goes that word again, divine. That's God, divine nature, the life of God. He said, I want you to partake of that. I want you living in it. So I'm giving you this book so you can look at it, escape. The corruption that's in the world, the degradation, the moral decline in this. Look at my country, United States. It's going, it's morally sick. And it's all around us. Inflation, recession, boys marrying boys, girls marrying bo girls. You got public officials getting up saying, it's okay, marry who you want, do what you want. It's crazy. And the Bible said, God wants me to escape. Like Lot, he wants me to come out. When men are doing this with men and women with women and fire and brimstone ready to fall, God said, I want you to escape. I want you out of there. So I'm giving you exceeding great and precious promises. Come out from among them and be your separate, saith the Lord. That's Bible. Look at it. It's all in the Bible. God wants us free, child of God. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. These are the things that have to do with our health, y'all. See, these are the things that have to do with our health. We keep thinking somebody got to lay hands on a baby. All we got to do technically is come to a knowledge of who in the world we are. That's, that's the truth right there. Really, I just need somebody. I just need to know who I am. And once I find out, get out my way. 
I'm binding devils, laying hands on the sick. I did it Sunday. Jesus healed the girl just like that. No problem. But once you find out who you are, we start playing games with the devil, playing games with the world, playing games in politics, taking sides like I'm this life. I'm that life. I'm that. I'm this all carnal. There's no power in it. None. And God, people sick and God tired of it. God through with it. He don't want no more of that mess. Worldly carnal. No, we not. We are the body of Christ. The body of the anointed one and his anointing, his power, miracle signs and wonders. The book of Acts is proof. Them people walk around. The Bible said people scared them. The Bible said people didn't want to join. They were scared. The church, you walk up in there, you can drop dead. Messing with the church, lying and all that stuff. It was holy awe. Miracle signs and wonders. The very shadow of Peter. He can just walk past you and you get healed. I'm talking about power. And in these last days, that's what we need. Don't call me no this life, that life. Don't talk to me. I know I'm black. You ain't got to talk to me about that. Talk to me about the power. Tell me I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Tell me talk in tongues. Lay hands on the sick. Garen, go cast the devil out of somebody. Tell me that. Tell me I'm the righteousness of God. Tell me I'm healed by Jesus stripes. Tell me that I don't have to be broke no more. That my needs can be met according to his riches and glory. Tell me what the Bible says. Yes, sir. I'm the body of Christ. I don't know about nobody else. I know who we are. And that's how I talk and this is how I live. Ask anybody. Now, I'm not living no defeated life. No. Not going to do it. Not while Jesus living in me. When the world my tongue's for. I'm talking in tongues and I can't get healed. What's I, something wrong? What do I need? Peter just told me. Knowledge, Garen. Get the information, son. And then allow yourself to multiply. Increase. Work the laws of the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in love. And do what's right in the natural. Rest your body. Hydrate it. Exercise it. Give it good healthy food. Forgive people. Get away from all that carnal mess. I read a scripture um, at Body Spirit Ministry that had me teaching on uh, Veterans Day. Where we're talking about we soldiers in the army. The Bible says no man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life. I mean, I, no. I might use the same kind of gas you do and eat the same kind of food. But baby, trust me, there's a difference. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. That's who I am. I'm a child of God. And all is well in the household of faith. Glory to God. First Thessalonians chapter five. Are you excited? Once you find out who you are, all this other stuff stop. We just need to know who we are. And then act. First Thessalonians chapter five. This is powerful, y'all. Lord, I should read the whole context, but time is short. I'll start at verse 22. Ready? Abstain from all appearance of evil. This is why I don't get involved in some of this worldly carnal stuff. No, it's wrong. God said abstain. Is that? You're gonna, wait a minute. Wait for it. You're going to taint my anointing. And I got to have this anointing. When God told me pray for that girl Sunday, that anointing needs to be flowing. I can't be all tainted. I, I need the anointing. Good time to play. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Verse 23. And the very God, please tell me you're reading this, of peace. You remember what I said peace mean? Peter's a Jew. He says shalom. Paul, who's writing this letter, he's a Jew. Y'all know Paul a Jew. The tribe of Benjamin, Pharisee of the Pharisees. He knew the law inside and out, blameless. He a Jew. So when he says peace, he's talking about shalom. He said the God with nothing missing. You know, it's true. God ain't got nothing missing. Nothing broken. You know, that's true. Ain't nothing broken with God. All, all perfect well-being. That God. Listen to what he said. The God of shalom. Sanctify you holy. That means complete. W H O L L Y. Not holy, H O L Y, consecrated. No, no, no. Whole, complete. He said, The God of Shalom wants you complete. That's what Peter said. 
Shalom. And God said, that's why I gave you all these promises. I, I want you to partake of the divine nature. I want you to come up higher. I want you to increase. I want you to multiply. Jesus said it. I want you to have abundance. See, overflow. The God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God. Now watch him say the same thing that the apostle John said. John said, I wish above all things. The word wish in Greek means pray above all things. My earnest desire. Paul said the same thing. I'm praying that your whole spirit, look at it, and soul and body be preserved blameless. Spirit and soul and body. The total man. God wants all of it blameless, all of it healthy. See, and the God of Shalom has to do it. And Peter told us how he does it through knowledge. When we get the information, we release our faith and we act on it. We're developing in it. We take these divine promises and we live in them. We operate from them. We govern our lives by them. And we don't forget the natural. We're still eating right. We take care of our body. We're resting. Exercise, and we're doing that. We got our supplements going, but we don't forget this. This book, this is what we need, the Word of God. Jesus said it's not natural food alone. It's every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He said we need them both. Why? Look at it. We're spirit and soul and body, so we need all of it. The spirit man feeds on the Word of God. The soul or the mind, will, and emotions, the Apostle Paul said, needs to be transformed. Go to Romans 12. I'll use that one. Romans 12. And then the body needs natural food. So every part of us needs to be fed. See? And once he is, that's where the health comes from, y'all. Divine health. God health. See? So if all I'm doing is the spiritual, no wonder we sick. He didn't take care of the natural, not renewing the mind. Yeah, you're sick. It's like, and I didn't say you weren't saved. You're born again. You're going to heaven. But what about taking care of this, the body? What about the mind being renewed? The whole man has to eat. Spirit and soul and body. And if all I give it is mental candy and what CNN said, as much as the Lord, can I say this? Please let me say it. <laughs> No, he won't let me say it. Dear Lord, let me just say it this way. As much as television be telling all them lies, and you that's all I'm feeding on, more than I feed on this word, no wonder we sick and crazy and think it's all right. Christians, I'm talking about the world. Christians think boys, are, it's okay for boys to marry boys. Chris, I ain't talking about the world. Christians, some preachers marrying them. Y'all crazy. I'm not going before Jesus saying I married those two boys. No, no way. I'd be too scared to go before Jesus and say I married them two boys. No way. I'm too scared, y'all. Uh-uh. I ain't doing it. I'd rather turn my license in. I'm not doing it. You ain't going to get me in trouble with God. Mm -mm. But see, that's what happens when the mind is not renewed. That's what happens when the spirit is not fed. See? That's what happens when we're not kingdom minded. We think we're we think we're we think we're world folk. We're not the world. We're spirit people. Chapter 12, book of Romans. Look at verse one. I beseech you by the word beseech me. He begging you. The apostle Paul is begging us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Who has to do that? Me. And he's begging me to do it. But Paul, I'm already born again. Yeah, now do something with your body, Garen. What do you want me to do, Paul? Give it to God. A living sacrifice. Give it to him. That, uh, that you may prove, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, or the Greek says, your, your, uh, your spiritual act of worship. That's my worship. I give him me, all of me. I give you me, Jesus, not just my tithe, me. You have me. I'm giving you me. Verse two and circle that word and. 
What does that mean? And I'm not going to insult your intelligence, but we're going to get this thing today. And there's a conjunction. It's connecting thoughts. He's connecting what he just said to what he's about to say. Not just present my body, but he wants me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. That's my soul. See, my spirit is already born again. Paul said, now I need you to present your body to God and then I need you to renew your mind. Why, Paul? So that you can prove what's the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the will of God? We just read it in 3 John. He wants us to prosper. He wants us in health, even as our soul prospers. So if my mind is not renewed by this word, my soul is not prospering. And if my soul is not prospering, my health is not prosperous. My wealth is not going to prosper outside of the renewal of my mind. See, that's why God gave us this book. That takes us right back to 2 Peter. He gave us exceeding great and precious promises. Take these so grace can be multiplied. Peace to be multiplied. Go with me, please, to the Gospel of John. Chapter, Lord, where are we going? Eight. Mm, 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 mm. By the grace of God, I just gave you the answer in a nutshell. Now you have to go and crack the shell and, and get it out of there, but that's it in a nutshell. We're spirit beings. We're born again. So what Adam lost in the garden, you and I got it back. Now we just have to, I mentioned this several weeks ago, we have to learn how to develop in it. Now, the things of God are not automatic. You have to develop in them. I have to develop in them. Everybody develops in them. Everybody has to develop in the things of God. Adam came in with it. That's why when God brought him all the animals, uh, Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says he was able to name every one of them. Adam was Adam's developed, baby. I mean, Adam, the Bible said whatever he called it, that's what it was. He's developed, boy. Now, when he sinned and disobeyed God, Eve ate first, but the Bible says the woman was deceived, but the man was not. That's what the Bible said. The man, he knew what he was doing. They know Adam don't get off scot-free. God went to you first because you were supposed to be the head. And God went to him with it. What is this you did? See, you did it. He ain't saying about Eve, you. He gave you that commandment. See? And when Adam lost that, he died spiritually. He lost all of that. See, you can tell he lost a lot. And the first thing he did was made uh, uh, clothes out of fig leaves, fig leaves. You got all this wisdom and you can do nothing. That's the best you can do, bro, is a fig leaf. So he already started losing. Can you see that? God had to go make him some of, of a skins. Let me show you how to do it, son. You, you're thinking way too low. Let's fix this. Can y'all see that? So he already started declining. Death had set in. That death passed to all mankind. Romans chapter 5 says so. That's why you and I have to be born again. Jesus said you must be. It's not optional because we came in spiritually dead because of Adam. Can you see that? When we get born again, we get it back. But now we need to develop in it. So we present our bodies to God renew our minds, the more we increase in the information, grace and peace are multiplied. That's why God gave us exceeding great and precious promises. Isn't that simple? Now look at what Jesus said as we begin to wrap this up. John chapter 8. <clears throat> this is so powerful. So powerful. Let's start at verse uh, 30. John chapter 8. We're going to close here. So, so look at it with your eyes, please. Perfect place to wrap this thing up. Let Jesus do the talking. As Jesus spake these words. Don't forget what he said. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word. So we're going to live of what he's about to say. Many believed on him. So Jesus spoke in such a way. They just believed. They said, man, this is wow. So in other words, faith came. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus was speaking. They believed it. Now, now, listen, that wasn't enough, though, because listen to what Jesus said. Then circle that word. Then 
The word then in, in literature has to do with sequence. So believing comes first. Then he said to them that believed on him, if you continue in my word, the initial words, verse 30, that they believed got them in the door. Jesus said, now, good. Then he said, continue in them. Continue what? These words. So you still need to live off the word. The word got you born again, but now I need you to continue in the word. By the way, these Jews didn't just get born again. Nobody got born again until after Jesus rose from the dead. I'm just making a point about steps and sequence. It starts with the initial word that you heard. You believed it? Great. Jesus said, now continue and you'll become a disciple indeed or a student. I told you we need to be developed. See, that's why you have to continue in the word. You don't have it all together. Neither do I. So we continue in the word, become disciples, students, so that grace can be multiplied, so that peace can be multiplied, so we can get that shalom working in our spirit and soul and body the way the Apostle Paul said. Verse 32, and there it goes again. He's connecting it again. So my initial believing, my continuing in the word, and see, all these go together. You shall know the truth. Oh, you mean the first time I believed I didn't get all the truth? No, you got the initial truth. <laughs> but Jesus said, that don't mean you know everything. Now I need you to become a student so I can give you some more truth. More truth, more grace. More truth, more peace. That's multiplied. Can you see that? And he did it again. He's connecting it again. The truth shall make you free. What makes me free? The truth. How do I get it? Continuing. How do I get it? Be a disciple. That's what he said. Oh, Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the pure and unadulterated word of God. We thank you for revelation from heaven today. We are the children of the most high God. We are what your word says we are. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. According to 1 Peter, we're healed by Jesus stripes. Glory to God. According to the Apostle Paul, we're more than conquerors. If that's what you said, then that's the way it is. We believe that. <laughs> we receive it. <laughs> and we make the commitment to continue in the word. 